December 20th, we're going inside. As you jump in, share it. One minute to eight, we're early tonight. Minute, seven minute, nine minute videos that other, um, I don't know what to call them, activists, talkers put out. And I just put out a video, two minutes on housing. We had 27,000 views. These videos are all along as a show. This is pretty much a show, and we do this every night or as much as possible because the purpose of this show is not just bacchanal and tankatan. I tell you that, I hint to y'all as we go along. Y'all knew. I told y'all Daryl Smith wife, throw him out, and that his marriage had collapsed. But we say that in passing. I told y'all Stuart Young marriage was in trouble months ago. We let that pass. I want to know though, why Stuart Young has state security sponsoring Miss Ernst and Young? Because I don't see how that comes as part of the package. And if the state is paying to secure such an irrelevant political personality's wife and is the state now securing Asha Javid and we need to know that because we need to know where the money going because we can't pay the pensioners and we can't pay the salaries but we're paying to secure people's bedfellows I want to know when Randall Mitchell zoom in with him and Judy then getting security too I need to know because if you all feel that it's bacchanal we like you can put the bacchanal out in the public space you always get it first we get it first and we get it here. But this is not about bacchanal. We are about identifying the problems and, ident and more importantly focusing on the solution. More important, getting to the solution, getting to the remedy. There are so many things that come up just before we get into the show. Don't you hear this one? As we hear and we gather in. Maybe I should hold it. I want to read this for you. Email gate probe ends. You see, I am telling Trinidad and Tobago, Keith Christopher Rowley has to be investigated, prosecuted, and charged. What he did in the parliament was tantamount to in an attempted coup, and it needs to be treated as that. The director of public prosecution has to tell this nation if what Keith Christopher Rowley did there can be considered treason. Because if it is, privilege can't help him. If it is, privilege cannot help him. So the director of public prosecutions need to say it. But this is the words... I want you to hear, you see, people forget, and they forget, and they forget. We move along like nine-day wonder people. When Commissioner of Police, Acting Commissioner of Police, Stephen Williams said, nothing of substance found. 
You know why he said that? You know why he said that? Because Farris in trouble too. Jokey lawyer, contract lawyer, lease and lend out lawyer, Farris al Rawi in trouble too. He in trouble with this. Because Farris defended this as the advisor to the government to keep Rowley. When, when Stephen Williams said, nothing of substance found. Police have completed their investigation into email gate, but nothing of substance. Listen, share the video, call people. I want to play Farris' voice for you. And I want to tell you why Williams said, nothing of substance found. And this is how you must hold their feet to the fire. This is how you must hold public office holders accountable and hang them from the petard of their own words. This is what Keith Rowley cannot evade. He reached to the point where he is falling apart. He is talking about his shoes as shit kickers. And he want to kick up Munilal. This is the jackass you have for a prime minister. This is where we reach, you know. As distraction today, as distraction today, the Minister of Education actually said these words. Eh? Now you tell me, Education Minister Anthony Garcia says fighting in schools is all a part of life and accused the media of blowing these incidents out of proportion. Namaste, good sir. Clearly, where you come from, your children have to fight their way into life. But fighting is not a part of anybody's life in a society that wants to consider itself first world, developed or conscious. But I don't know where we get that jackass from. Anthony Garcia, every time he opens his mouth, I want to shove something in it to save him from himself and the nation from hearing what next piece of bullshit coming out the woodsman mouth. I mean, this decrepit, old, decaying grandfather had the nation thinking about him as a woodsman. But I only find out now because the whole young generation bullying their way through the media. Das, Desha, Judy, Hema, Asher. How could you be interviewing people on issues of national concern, sleeping with the people who put in information in the public space, and worse, like Stuart Young, misinformation? Come now, man, Asha. Come now, man. I talked to you about this already over and over. But it's like political office opens your legs. It's like that opens your legs. Blue light opens your legs. Why it is that you all need to evade and throw aside your ethics to stunt? Why? You have two children, woman, for two different men. Oh, Christ, by now you should have learned to carry yourself with a certain amount of decency and respect. If not for yourself and for your profession, then by Christ for your children. What Stuart Young brings to the table now? What? Real talk. Every one of you have made yourselves into a laughing stock for the nation and then want to get together. I never forget this jackass who writes 868. What's his name? Wired 868. Some little fail wannabe journalist who had put everybody on blast when they had. Asha had put her. He, she put her own post in the public space. And he come to give people talk about that because I feel that this old joke, the difference between a slut and a bitch. A slut will sleep with anybody. A bitch will sleep with anybody but me. And I feel that was his situation. He was trying hard to get, but he don't have blue lights. He had nothing to get. He had nothing to get. But anyway, come back on this. Because I want you to hear the commissioner of police. Police have completed the, the investigation into email, email game, but nothing of substance has come out of it. It is now up to the Director of Public Prosecutions to make a pronouncement on the matter. That is the latest word from Acting Police Commissioner Stephen Williams in the controversial probe in which several former government ministers had been accused of being involved in a sinister move. Not a move, a plot to undermine the judiciary, the office of the director of public prosecution, and to murder a journalist, Denise Rand. We're not sanitizing tonight. This is the nonsense that Keith Rowley said in the parliament. When Google sent back a report to say it was bullshit, because Google didn't use the words bullshit, but Google used the words, there is nothing of substance here. I want you to hear it was never about whether emails exist or not. It was about whether the substance of what was reported on those pages happened to be true. That is Peter Pan himself 
Faris al-Baghdadi, I want you to listen to his words again in stark contrast to what Google said and what the commission of police said because these people are in trouble. It was never about whether emails exist or not. It was about whether the substance of what was reported on those pages happened to be true. Williams, nothing of substance found. Police have completed their investigation into email gate, but nothing of substance has come out of it. But wait, as if that could be enough in this nation of fake politicians and fraudulent utterances. I invite you to go back to his motion. And I invite you to read what was said on Parliament. What Dr. Rowley said is that the substance of this requires an investigation. And he prays that it is not true. Faris al rawi says twice, he says twice I have him recorded saying that the matter of email gate didn't matter. That the substance is not whether or not there was a unicorn in the room, you know. That don't matter. Who was riding the unicorn was important. But Faris is accustomed to fooling little girls. He's not accustomed to dealing with intelligent men. So when he talk his bullshit and we get to hold him to it now, I want to hear his next point on this. But I, want you to I hear invite him. you to go back to his motion. And I invite you to read what was said on Parliament. What Dr. Rowley said is that the substance of this requires an investigation. And he prays that it is not true. So now that Google has said that the emails was bullshit, and Faris and Rowley said, forget the emails, the substance is important, and the commissioner of police said the subs there's no substance, where do we go from here? Where do we as a nation go from here? Having been through a, an, an, a leader of the opposition, forget the fact that he went in Ken Gordon House and dragged the then chairman of the integrity commission into his bullshit. Forget that. Forget that he went in Ken Gordon house up the road from himself in Newberry Hill and bring Ken Gordon and his office into bullshit. Let me tell you how he, put, he brought that man office into Odium and that's why Ken Gordon's contract was never renewed. Because Keith Rowley went there alone and had a private meeting with the chairman of the integrity commission, leader of the opposition, as prosecutor, integrity commission, as judge, went to have a private trial and put the government on trial. That's what he did. That's what he did. He went to have a Baghdad style trial. You didn't have to be present. Like Alice in Wonderland, when the Queen said, judgment first, trial after. Keith Rowley judged and found them one day. So he came to the Parliament after he had created his entire conspiracy of nonsense. He came to the Parliament to throw down the government. Email Gates' plan was a premeditated assault on a democratically elected government that could have collapsed it and it had no merit or substance. This requires that a precedent be set. At the very least, immediately, if we are not a jokey nation, if that parliament is not a joke, at the very least, Keith Rowley's parliamentary privileges should be revoked with immediate effect. And he should be banned from those hallowed halls. There should also be a criminal investigation into whether this could be considered treason. This is not a simple case of pecan or political banter. And it is highly disingenuous of the Prime Minister and the Attorney General to suggest that it was. And we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, we are in a very funny place again. Tonight, it is getting worse. Every single day, it gets worse as we fight with these people masquerading as leaders. You see, a friend of mine today, she went home. And her entire family was out. And they had broken into her place and stole all the electronic devices and all the toys for all her children under the tree. They stole her TV, her kids' laptops, um, iPads, whatever. They stole everything, their phones, whatever was there, they stole it. They went there to commit that crime. And we live in a country where they come in with cutlass and guns. So if you're there when they reach. But this is what's going on. Every time you call somebody on the phone, the back up, Alani. Deepak Kapalani may get tired up and the house get ransacked and robbed. They come via sea 
on your open deck, on your waterfront property, they come via sea and break in your house. It is not an easy, easy place we live in it now. And the people of Trinidad and Tobago have to understand the name of this video. Fix it or forget it. Fix it or forget it. Do not leave yourself. I put out something this evening. I'd like to read that to you. Be before I get to that, we are closing in on 500 murders for this year. Now that does not count for the people that are missing and whose bodies are yet to appear. But New York City is going to end this year. You all know I have a hard-on for New York City. Sorry for saying it so. I keep comparing everything to New York City. You know why? Because in the 80s, New York City was Gotham. In the 80s, New York City was the murder capital of the world. In the 80s. And then along came one man, Rudy Giuliani. One man with a vision and a plan. And I model myself after him sometimes because I understand what it is like to be single-minded of purpose when your job is to rescue the place. Rudy Giuliani came. I remember when he had that press conference and he told the commissioner of police. He said, my job is to secure the city through the commissioner of police. But it doesn't have to be this commissioner of police. Message received. The next day, people was getting tickets for jaywalking, littering. You didn't close the door behind you on the, by the park. I got a sign that says close the door. $50 fine, $100 fine. People was throwing away the thing. They thought the police was joking. And then people started to get arrested for not paying those tickets. And they understood. Broken windows. Broken windows theory. We know it. It works. It works worldwide. Japan is closing down their jails. Japan is renting out their police. They have no work for the police to do. Holland, Sweden, Finland, they're closing down their jails. They're closing it down. They're renting it out. They're turning them into apartments. Nobody is committing crime. The society works. They share the wealth. They make it happen. Everybody has an opportunity. Hope an opportunity. And then, if you then step out of line, you expect that there would be law and order and swift justice. Trinidad, one million people closing in on 500 murders this year. New York City, with 8.5 million people, is going to close this year with their lowest murder rate since 1960. 300. Not per capita. Not per capita. 300. We have 500. They have 8 point something million people. We have one. They have 65,000 police. We have five. You cannot continue to tolerate nigger coolie politics. You cannot continue to tolerate nigger coolie conversation and pretend that that is political expression. That has to end. We as a nation have to realize that this is not that and that is not working. It is not working. You could be watching this video tonight and die tomorrow. You could die tonight. Home invasion. This is Christmas and carnival. And the bandits want to stunt. As I tell my friend today, he said, you know, I had seen somebody in the yard six months ago. I said, that's when they found out how to break in your house. After that, they were just wasting, waiting time. Waiting for the opportunity. This fellow's professional. They're going through your yard, your neighbor yard, the people across the road. You see them, you hear about them. Hey, you only hear that somebody in the street. And then you forget. Three months pass. You forget. But they don't forget. They check who have camera, who have dog, who have padlock, who have what. And then come in prepared. So they're walking down your street. And you're not there. That's your turn. That's your turn. And you by your political apathy and laziness have made that happen. You have contributed to the wolf. And you don't want to hear it. Freak you, Philip. You can't say that. I know I pay my taxes. Yes. But you're paying your taxes to criminals. You're paying your taxes to people who have no interest in running the country for you. You might as well be lighting that money on fire and blowing it in the breeze and say, protect me, Lord Shiva, Mother Lakshmi, Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, call all the deities. 
you might as well buy those feathered dream catchers and put them all over the yard and say that's my security plan I am not an easy person to deal with. I tell you that up front. People like me, we unreasonable. But they say reasonable people accept things as they are. Unreasonable people change the world. I am very unreasonable. I do not tolerate mediocrity. I do not accept bullshit. I am very difficult to work with. I respect all the people who work with me because I know what they put up with when they work with me. But I'll tell you this, and I told Trinidad last night, if the Progressive Empowerment Party had existed in 2015 and had won the election, this is 2017 December, Tobago's tourism would be bubbling. We would have at least 15 private sector marinas running right now with cruise ship contracts coming from all over the world. And we would be on target for a million cruise ships Tourists. And that's the first step in our tourism master plan for Tobago. If the Progressive Empowerment Party was in government tonight, we would have already put things in place to shut down the Port of Spain prison and it would have been decommissioned by now. Proper prisons would have been built where the people would be every single day of life. Every single day of life you're in class. And you're learning how to read and how to write and how to count and you're learning a trade and you're learning if you want to go and become a lawyer or a mason or a carpenter wherever you want to be we will make that jail into a university because when you come out we don't say back we want you to be a contributing member of society we understood that you got here because you had no choices okay we take that but we make sure you have choice now you was in the people jail for five years, they feed you, and you come out with a degree. Go and get your ass a walk. Because don't come back again. That's how you have to run the country. But that's not how this country is run. And we have to take responsibility for that because the jokers in the government and the parliament, we are the ones putting them there. And we are the ones that have to move them. It is up to us. It is up to us. Customer came to my restaurant, saw the PEP logo and policies on the wall, said to me, that's the man they call an arrogant. I love him too bad. Chinese don't know what's good for them anymore. And that thanks to those two jackasses, Kamala and Rowley. She ended by saying she voted PNM since the age of 18. She's 45 now, and PNM UNC will never get a vote as it is now going towards the PEP. I know I'm difficult. You can't have a strong personality like me and come toe to toe with me. You better know what you're doing. I tell people that this, I want to debate Rowley. I want to debate Kamala. I want to debate Farris. Farris, debate me on your legislative agenda. And no, I do not have a law degree, but I will embarrass you with law because I know I have probably read more law than you have. And I would like to debate you on your legislative agenda. As the, as the Attorney General. I want to tell you all something. The Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago calls for two people only to form the government. The Prime Minister and the Attorney General. And the Prime Minister is the Minister of Everything. The Prime Minister is the Minister of Education, he's the Minister of Health, he's the Minister of Water Courses, he's the Minister of Security, he's the Minister of anything that is a problem or that is addressing in the country. He is the Minister of that. And everybody else that comes in and gets a ministry is an assistant to the Prime Minister. That's how Westminster works. Our Prime Minister has no plan, no vision, no idea. We've put a barking dog as our Prime Minister and somehow assumed that we would have gotten something other than noise. Look at where we're at. Look at where we're at, people of Trinidad and Tobago. Look at where we're at. You have a stunt artist for an attorney general. A stunt artist. A stunt artist who only knows how to go on him and Fazil show and talk well-structured, well-quiffed bullshit. It was never about whether emails exist or not. It was about whether the substance of what was reported on those pages happened to be true. 
I invite you to go back to his motion. And I invite you to read what was said on Parliament. What Dr. Rowley said is that the substance of this requires an investigation, and he prays that it is not true. So we have no substance, Faris. What's your next play? It's not the emails, because Google told it was bullshit. So you say, forget the emails, it's about the substance. No, we have no substance. What's your next play, Faris? It's about the hair, the hair texture, what camera does rub on your neck. What it is about now, Faris, when you and your partners in crime conspired to undermine the sanctity of the parliament and try to throw down a democratically elected government, there is no difference between what Keith Rowley did and what Abu Bakr tried to do in 1990. And both of them should have paid the ultimate price. This country needs to wake up and stop excusing foolishness and taking... F Listen. We have laws to keep the small man down. While the big man getting away with literal murder. That is this country. It needs to undo and redo. And all those secret societies and back rooms in Clydesdale Club and Union Club and all these clubs and lodges that meet to plan the future and the present day of our people, all that need to undo and redo. All that need to confront and resolve. All of that. This is the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The things that are going on in this country shouldn't be allowed to continue. And we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, we are allowing it. And it is us to blame. Because our reality is that this that exists is as a direct result of our choices or our political apathy. Month and a half stories published in the Trinidad Express have raised questions about Chief Justice Ivo Archie and his friendship with Dylan Johnson, a man convicted of fraud. The Chief Justice has been silent on other matters, including whether he tried to influence Supreme Court judges to change their personal state-provided security in favor of a private company for which Johnson worked. But after Johnson was shot outside his home in Springville, Gasparillo on December 3rd, a sinister story has emerged, possibly implicating a high-ranking judicial officer, a special forces soldier, and a former acting head of SWORD. The revelations came to light after a statement was provided by Johnson to Superintendent Yusuf Alexander of the... This is your PNM government, you know. This is what they try to unleash on this nation with SWORD, you know. SWORD and some special laws that since Manning days they're trying to pass will remove your rights to any freedom. I want to tell you, this is a nation where the Attorney General said privacy is not an absolute right. While the Constitution recognizes the right to private and family life, it is not an absolute right. Attorney General Faris and Rawi stated in a press release issued last week. This is a government of criminals. That is what is running the country right now. Listen to what is going on here. And later sworn to by him and recorded by... Special Justice Forces soldier, head of SWORD and a judicial officer trying to kill this man. ...in an enterprise to cause him harm or worse. He said prior to the shooting he had been followed by this black extreme without any number plates. He said in his police statement... You could get followed in Trinidad and Tobago by a black x trail that have no number plates. Play! Play! You cross that line. Then, when you think that you could dial the phone and call for backup... ...he learned that the person driving this vehicle was the Special Forces soldier who he had met prior to the shooting. The soldier allegedly claimed he was there to protect him. You send a, you send a black x trail with no number plates to protect the man. Johnson said in a statement that he cloned the Special Forces soldier's phone with his at a second meeting after the shooting took place. He indicated that he was able to gain access to all the soldier's WhatsApp conversations, which he screenshotted and realized one of the numbers was familiar to him. Said, this is a very serious issue. We in murky, murky water. People 
public servants. The Chief Justice is a public servant. The Prime Minister is a public servant. The Attorney General is a public servant. And these public servants now need to be fired. We need to put into office a proper government and then begin the process of untangling the Gordian knot of all this bullshit that has been going on. Constant conversations with that person to whom that number was assigned who turned out to be a high-ranking judicial officer. Johnson said he had met the high-ranking judicial officer in early 2016 through a friend and in a statement to the police indicated that he had later gone to meet him in Guyana in late September of this year. The number was saved in the soldier's phone as Brickettier, a 4-6 number, which under the profile turned out to be the phone used by the high-ranking judicial officer. Ali. You keep asking us how we're going to do this. I want to tell you again, and for everybody looking on who keep asking that question, you stand up. You speak out. People say that I give them hope and I give them courage. Good. Stand up. Speak out. Add your voice. I had to tell somebody today, 10,000 people outside the parliament changes the way parliament works. And police can't move here for that because police is public servants too. Understand that the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, before it recognizes police, prime minister, president, chief justice, or DPP, it recognizes the people of Trinidad and Tobago. It is a document that functions on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago and it speaks those office holders into existence. But stick up in. Let's deal with this. TV6 News was able to obtain copies of the WhatsApp conversations days before Johnson was shot. We were able to verify through well-placed sources that a 7-8 number was registered to a former sort head, while the 4-6-8 number is registered to the judiciary and the 313 number registered in the name of the soldier. Now slow your entire rule. A high-ranking judicial officer, the head of sort, and a special forces soldier are in conspiracy to silence a man who is saying that he has information on the Chief Justice. So, following the publication of some of the Express stories, WhatsApp conversations between the Special Forces soldier and the high-ranking judicial officer intensified. On November 24th, the soldier says to the high-ranking judicial officer, he getting help from somewhere, want to deal with him, and the judicial officer shoots back, most likely Annan. This is total, absolute madness. So he replies, okay, deal with it. The following year, November 25th, the judicial officer asks, you know Jamil Sadiq? The soldier says, good night, sir. Where Jamil Sadiq from? He just came from Springville, Gasparillo, where Dylan Johnson lived. His uncle stays in the house, a white extra of PDJ 440. Hear what's going on? State money, your money, paying for this, eh? He's supposed to go to a party tonight, so I'm going back later, and yet he told people to have a hit on your head. The high-ranking judicial officer later asks that a soldier meet him the following day. Why then was this high-ranking judicial officer asking to get hold of Johnson's phones as this conversation revealed on the morning of November 26th? Understand where we are now in the conversation. Pay attention. Things he did not. We removed part of the numbers. We need to get all his phones, DJ that is. Will he talk? Hmm. I keep hearing car accident. No. I keep hearing car accident. For me, for one of the two. The question is, who was you referring to? In that very day, the Sunday Express published a front page story entitled Confessions, in which Johnson gave his side of the story. The following day, on November 27th, the Express again published a front page story, CJ Mrs. Judges. The high-ranking judicial officer seemed annoyed and that afternoon sent messages to the soldier stating Laws unto themselves. Laws unto themselves. They get a state work, public servant work. They put on fancy robe and think they are now above the law. Papers need to shut up though. And the soldier replies, I'm fixing that and more. Don't worry. The high-ranking judicial officer responds with a thumbs up and later says, pace ramping up though, especially with DJ. The question... DJ is one of two people, Dylan Johnson or Keith Rowley, who say he's a DJ. I doubt this have anything to do with Rowley. Rowley's job is to fire the Chief Justice. Why is sticking on that? We will discuss that. Why now all the concern about Dylan Johnson? And what was the soldier going to fix? 
While their conversations continue over the next few days, the high-ranking judicial officer commented on Wednesday, 29th November. Let's see if the Express going to publish anything this weekend. On Sunday, December 3rd, early in the morning, an ex-sort had reached out to the soldier via WhatsApp saying, do not speak about our business to anyone. And then that night at 10, 12 p.m., he asks, This is insane. A man who is about to be shot is reading in WhatsApp about his shooting that is about to take place. Listen to this. Eh? Is there anything further on the shooting? According to police reports, the shooting of Johnson did not happen for another 18 minutes and occurred closer to 10.30 p.m. The soldier only responded to the message at around 11.22 p.m. saying he was liaising with Johnson who went to the San Fernando Hospital. Sources say only after the shooting was Johnson able to make sense of the messages he had intercepted and read. Johnson read about a shooting, not understanding that it was he that was going to be shot. One day later, the high-ranking judicial officer asked for an update, and then on Friday, December 8th, there was another conversation with the soldier and the high-ranking judicial officer in which a possible second attempt was to be made on Johnson's life. This high-ranking judicial officer says, what's up? Again, they come at it again. In the Royal Imperial Majestic Banana Republic of do what the hell you like land, where the police in all of this? Well, he replies, he by a bar in Gasparillo, getting one of his friends to join him out, going to protect the state. He knows me. Getting one of his friends in the bar to draw him out, I am going to put him to sleep. This is what was said here. The high-ranking judicial officer responds, okay. And then the soldier says, sent a man in the bar already. We'll clean this up. The questions are, who were they planning to put to sleep? And what exactly were they planning to clean up? Stick up in right there. Why is Dylan Johnson not in protective custody? Why is the Chief Justice still the Chief Justice? Where is the police investigation on this? Where is the Commissioner of Police report? Where is the Minister of National Security? Where is Shep Kicker, the DJ, your Prime Minister? Where is any of the leadership and the public servants that you and I are paying every single day to run and manage this country while that madness is taking place? Where are they? Where are they? Leading the country down the road of misdirection, deflection and bullshit. It was never about whether emails exist or not. It was about whether the substance of what was reported on those pages happened to be true. It is not about if a unicorn came walking through your house. There are no such things as unicorns. But just in case there was somebody riding the non-existent unicorn, we need to study that. That is your attorney general. That is Al Baghdadi, silky draws himself, Peter Pan. That is the bullshit you are paying him for. I invite you to go back to his motion. And I invite you to read what was said on Parliament. What Dr. Rowley said is that the substance of this requires an investigation. And he prays that it is not true. Google, the Integrity Commission, vacated the nonsense of email it. Faris Arawi jump out himself and say it is the substance he wants you to pay attention to. Commissioner of Police, have, the police have com completed their investigations into email gate, but nothing of substance has come of it. Faris Arawi should be fired, not just for this. Faris Arawi should have been fired when his children were stunting in Kamuto holding high-powered high weapons. Farish should have been fired when they conspired to put out a report and blame a man, a former chief of the defense staff who say, hey, madness, I'm not involved, I wasn't there, I didn't get no permission, leave me out your bullshit. All of them should have been fired. The, the chief of defense staff who organized that bullshit, get a house in Victoria Keys, your money pay for that. Your money pay for all of that. You can't get a bed sheet in the hospital. You can't get a pension this month. Your money paid for bullshit. How you feel about that? How you feel about that? But they want me to be accepted by this media. I'm not bullying none of them. 
I'm not lying down with Hema, Judy, Shelly, Desha. I'm not with none of them. So I can't get treated special. And. Paris and Rowley and Colm and Mitchell and Young and Daryl and Champha and the rest of the bandit jackass clan they say when the word come up what about the people the people getting disturbed just hold them and walk them I do one job now this I do progressive empowerment party all day all night this is what I do and it pissing them off PNM and UNC and they point out meme after meme he's a con man he's a racist he's a player he interfered with everybody guilty around, and he gay all of those things one after the other they created they, they created whole pages but they get in nine likes Nine likes, you're attacking my personality and three people agreeing with you. 87% of the voting public said in the last NACTA poll, they want neither nor PNM nor UNC. 61% said they want that third party option. You didn't poll PEP, but don't worry. 2018, we're going to level up what we accomplished in one year and that massive family day, we're going to list for you what we accomplished in just one year. No other political party has put out the level of nation changing, undoing and redoing, republic rebooting policies, plans, programs and ideas that we have and we will deal with them one by one. I'm in KFC. I like it all. With the Rasil, hold on the treasury. Put on the road. We jump in still. We jump in still. Economy. Put on the road. We jump in still. We jump in. Was there a unicorn, Faris? I invite you to go back to his motion. And I invite you to read what was said on Parliament. What Dr. Rowley said is that the substance of this requires an investigation. And he prays that it is not true. But Faris, the Integrity Commission said it was bullshit. Faris, Google said it was bullshit. What's your opinion on that? It was never about whether emails exist or not. It was about whether the substance of what was reported on those pages happened to be true. Hear that piece of mind fucking... Uh... I had to use that word because that's what he tried to do the nation. He just literally raped the entire nation's mind. I give you an email. Forget that the email is not real. The contents of the email. Listen, now, man. You gotta give this man a prize. You, know? you gotta give Faris Alawi a prize. He deserves a prize. Hear that now. Hear that again. It was never about whether emails exist or not. It was about whether the substance of what was reported on those pages happened to be true. I can run out of analogies. I like my unicorn. I run out of analogies. They have a man in the Progressive Empowerment Party. He don't like me at all. But he believes the earth is flat. So I think he and, we, he and I be good. As long as the earth flat for him, I good. I want to tell you something. Faris Al-Rawi. Faris Al-Rawi. He is a shit kicker. Rowley used joke. That is shit kicking extraordinary. There is an email circulating. Forget the email. The substance of the email is what Faris wants you to think about. This is what Faris thinks of you. We do business. 
all your link up. You have your costume. You have your fake tickets. You know if you're going to be alive when it comes, but still. You went by Island Finance. You link up. Eh? A man say he ain't voting for me again because I say so kind of shit. Every year they singing the same crap. I'm in the gym today and a Marshall song come on the radio. I like it, I tap in my toes. But I cannot tell if it is 2017, 2018, 2016, 2015, 2014, or 2002. Because I cannot tell. Marshall has been singing basically the same bullshit every year. And we've been lining up to take it. And they've already planned who's going to perform in each and every single party. Because it doesn't matter what he sings. He could make a mess. He take, a, he take a year off of carnival and still win road match. Look now, all you know, and you have your costume, and you have your costume ready. This is I went to the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. DJ Rowley. Trinidad and Tobago appeared in the minister and told him that there was big rigging taking place in Unicot. Told him that there was big rigging taking place in Unicot. Told him that there was big Keith Rowley stood up in the parliament in 2009 and said this. To the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago in August 2003. You were in the parliament to say it. Keith Rowley was just fired by Patrick Manning in 2009. Keith Rowley said to the nation, I went to the Prime Minister in August 2003. But this is 2009. How come you didn't go to the people, Kitos? How come all of the issues that you raised, you said that you told the Prime Minister in 2003 that there was massive bid rigging <clears throat> taking place in Unicot. And for six years after that meeting, you ate cabinet food, drank cabinet wine, interfered with girls with cabinet blue lights, and said nothing to the nation that was paying your salary. As a minister of government in Trinidad and Tobago, a PMA minister, and told him that there was big rigging taking place in Unicot. If you knew that in 2003 and you're still in the cabinet in 2009, you are conspiring after, before and after the fact. Because you know, you know that you are part of a corrupt government and it was okay with you. Worse. Worse, keep Christopher Mugabe Sangaroli because I see you from a mile away with the three tongues you have in your head. You talk shit, more shit, and only shit. You told the nation that, but you sat there and worse, you fought an election in between 2003 and 2009 and defended it. What the Commission of Inquiry is looking at is ten times worse than what happened with the Apo Airport. Even more brazen, the PLM is on trial. PLM is on trial. The PLM is on trial. The PLM is on trial. The PLM is on trial. What the Commission of Inquiry is looking at is ten times worse than what happened with the Apo Airport. You knew that in 2003, you son of a bitch. You knew it was ten times worse than Piapo, and you raised holy hell against Bastio Pande and the madness that was the marauding of Ish and Steve and Brian and the 13, 11, and the 9. And you knew it was billions of dollars that were stolen in Piaco. And you came, you come now to tell us in 2009 that you know since 2003 that what was taking place was ten times worse than Piaco, and we're supposed to take you on face value. And it's even more crazy. The PLM is on trial because those of us, those of us who were here at charity, the, 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 the O'Halloran stain, we All of you who are interested in the PEP's housing plan, send an email to petrinbago at gmail.com. Now that you all have seen that there are hundred thousand dollar houses, and now that you understand that what I am saying we can do, that you can get 
a $500 mortgage for the next 30 years and have an actual home, now that you see it, send an email to peptrinmago at gmail.com. Include in that email your name, your email address, and your phone number. You will be contacted and invited to a public meeting in the new year. The PEP is escalating its housing policy plan, and we are going to force the government to treat with the people of Trinidad and Tobago in ways that they deserve. But you cannot sit home like a keyboard warrior. You can't do that. Representation requires that you be present. Send an email to peptrinbago at gmail.com. Even if you call 347-4PEP, they will still have to tell you, we need your contact information because we are organizing a housing meeting. And if you would like to be a part of what we are doing, Send an email to peptrinbago at gmail.com with your name, your email address, and your phone number, and you will be contacted. But come back to this. Come back to this. I said today, one friend out of the hospital, another comes home to find a house ransacked and everything of importance stolen. A nation reeling from mismanagement and bungled governments. How much more can the people take? When the police shot and killed the 15 year old, when the police shot and killed the 15 year old, his mother said they targeted him. But he was in the process of committing a crime and was already known to the police at 15, as was his brother, and was known to have access to firearms based on his own social media posts. Police take a bad rap all the time and some of it well deserved. But we cannot allow this good boy syndrome to permeate our thinking. There is a thing in law enforcement called a good kill. And while it, has a, while it is an obscenity of an oxymoron, remember police officers are also putting their lives on the line, begging the question, where is the line? Should an officer have to be equally injured and survive to take down his attacker? This is not Hollywood, but real life. And the honest truth is, that a lot of this misery being visited on innocent law-abiding citizens by persons trespassing on them and invading the sanctity of their space, those perpetrators, in my view, surrender all rights. We are one interconnected mass of humanity still tr all trying to make it through the day. And while the politics has divided and destroyed this nation, it could not have happened without our choice or worse, our apathy. That's a word for laziness. We are setting the tone for what happens by our political laziness and inaction. For all the good boys still walking upright, stand up. Rescue them. Give them hope and opportunity before a state-sponsored bullet lays them down for good. For all of you still one step ahead of the wolf, it is time to fix it or forget it. Either get busy helping to rescue our broken nation or sell out and go. But this is a we thing and we need to get that. The ones you are waiting on to fix it is you. It is we. It is time to engage this as reality. Failure to govern cannot be justified by tribal considerations. It is time to take responsibility for the country. It is time to vote ourselves a better nation. It is time to vote ourselves a better nation. We are working very hard to build you an alternative. We don't just raise issues in the public space. We don't just contribute to the bacchanal and the noise. We are actually giving you an alternative that allows for the ending of racist ethnic tribal voting and gives all the people of Trinidad and Tobago a real shot at a real country. It is time for us to fix it. It is time for us to vote ourselves a better country. would like to be invited to the fam family day because that's going to be a massive event and everything will be free bouncy castles for the kids petting zoo ice cream lunch come and be a part of the progressive empowerment party's first anniversary yes it has only been 
12 months. January 18, we will be one year old. And we are planning a massive, all members invited, first anniversary family day. Make sure that you send your email if you have not officially joined as yet. Do so now. Peptrinbago at gmail.com or go peptt.com and click join. You have two choices. Peptt.com, click join. Go on the pep app, join there. Email pettrinbago at gmail.com. Join there. Come to 19 Stanmore Avenue, Saturday, 6th of June, 6th of January, when we open back. Join there. You have so many opportunities to join and come and be a part of this party. Come and hear what we've done for the first year and how we are going to eclipse that in 2018. We are only growing in 39 constituencies and our tens of thousands of members are growing by the day. You need to be a part of this. Come and get on board and help us rescue this nation. Just as how you vote them in. Vote them out. Vote them out. Vote them out. And utter this day. Let's put our country together again. The truth of the matter is, if we do not stand up for Trinidad and Tobago, we will have to live with the consequences. It is going to happen. It is a handful of people that are ruining this nation. We can replace those handful, that handful of people with functional governance, public servants who understand leadership, and we will do what we are supposed to do to undo and redo all that is wrong with Trinidad and Tobago. There is a constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and we hold that supreme as our supreme. Law, and we will return to that and we will undo and redo the entire stunt fest and tiny emperors we have in this country all that done all done we will audit and undo and redo every single organization of state chief immigration officer commissioner of police head of the licensing office listen we're going in to fix it we're going in to fix it and I know and I keep hearing people say boy they're going to take that nice listen pick up arms against the state and we will put you down we are not in this to joke. We want five years, one term. When we're done, we hand it on. A perfectly running country. Food price cheap, education working, healthcare available, water for all. I mean, oh God, just, just, just again, just again, the question always that I have to ask, name one thing in this country that works. One thing. Name one member of parliament that you're proud of and stick, stick a pin in your racism. Seriously, not how they look or, or, or if they're related to you. What they doing? Are you proud? Are you really, really proud that that is what passing for government, cabinet and parliament in this country? We're in a mess. We're in a true and rotted mess. And we're in that mess because we allow it. It is time for us to change the game, to flip the script, to slow the roll, to undo and redo, to reboot the republic, all of those things. It is up to us. It is up to us. Put them on the spot. Tell Keith Rowley, miss me with the bullshit that your shit kickers talk. Talk to us about what you're doing on the work because you want to fire your ass. You have a responsibility to every single person in this country. Not to be giving us back and all and a set of old noise. You're a big ass old man by now. You can't have some respect for yourself and for the people looking on at you. You're talking about you want to shit kick Rudal Monilal. How do people who have children looking at you supposed to think and feel? How? How? What are you? You are an embarrassment. You are shaming your family. You are an embarrassment to the entire nation. You are the worst prime minister we have ever had. You are disgusting and obscene. You are a travesty. You are making a mockery of the office. You've brought it into odium and disrepute. Everything that you have touched, you've destroyed. The office of the opposition leader now is tainted forever by an attempted coup by the last holder. You. You. And the people of Trinidad and Tobago have to put you on the spot. And anybody else who come in for your vote say, hey, have you had a chance? What have you done? Let's talk housing. 
Why we never had a housing policy that made it possible for minimum wage earners to own a home? Why have we never had a food policy that was built on consumption data that brought food prices down to the, to the point where minimum wage earners could now have a living wage? Why has our education system left 90% of the children behind year after year after year, despite $50 billion being spent in the last 10 years? In Price Club Supermarket this last week, a pregnant woman collapsed on the floor and they called for the ambulance. That is Price Club at Next Water Mid Center Mall. It'll be hard as go on us. Two hours later, no ambulance show up. This is Trinidad and Tobago that's spending fifth that spent fifty billion dollars on healthcare in the last ten years. We're spending six billion this year. You're not safe. But six billion going to security, two and a half billion to police, two billion to army. Where's that money going? What is happening with it? You have to ask these questions. Today I put out in the public space, Barbados ringing the alarm bell about Sajiko. Another come, another Clico come in, another Clico come in. These people are doing you what they want. It is time for you to stand up for your country. We cannot continue like this. We are all ready in a crisis you don't know while you watching this video now who watching you who case in your house who case in your business who watching your family your girl children for human trafficking who looking to recruit your son in the gang and if you don't join the killing you know the kind of things right now the wolf sniffing around you and you don't even know and you listening to me and you arguing in your mind and you say good points you know he have good points but i don't like his glasses he have good points but i don't like the color orange he have good points but i don't shout too much and the wolf sniffing all up in your crutch and you don't even know what coming for you the reality is don't like me you know i'm not here for you to like i here to work i come in to fix this if you want it fixed and hear what don't vote for me you know i don't need a job don't feel like fighting this dog I hear giving you everything I have, but if you don't choose me, no problem at all. I got to go. I got to go. I don't need to be interfering with them hard-faced journalists. I know nice girls, and I'm happy with that. And I'm telling you, plain as day. So tonight, and I want to say this, if the Guardian and the Express and CNC3 and TV6 never cover PEP again, I will be okay with that because we have nobody in this team set up to be stunting with them hoes. And that's where we at. And we have to face that as a reality. Our entire country is compromised and ruined to the core. It is a cancer and we need to excise it. We need to remove it. We need to undo and redo and fix this country. And you have an opportunity. The Progressive Empowerment Party is a real political party with real plans, programs and policies. We have, an, we have a plan for every single thing. And every time somebody says... Uh, some I agree with some, some I don't agree with, and I want to challenge him. Hey, Philip Alexander 99 at yahoo.com. They have two L's in Philip, and it's number nine twice. Philip Alexander 99 at yahoo.com. On Facebook, all my Facebooks open to the public. Challenge me, because every time somebody proves something that needed tweaking, we make it a little stronger. We make it a little better. So it's not a fight. Send us your information. If you don't agree, we will find a way to get you to agree. The reality of our situation is we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have to come together, join hands, lock arms, one people under one flag, and steer down this madness that has been passing for governance in this country for the past 55 years. Change is here. Change has come. This is Christmas time. I want you to enjoy your Christmas with your family. But every night I end this video, Every single night I end this video, I say, stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago. I had to remove 12 people from my Facebook to make space. About 1,000 people trying to add me as friends. And all 12 of them were dead. All 12 were dead. Understand you're not alone. You are making yourself alone. Understand you, your family, your neighbors, your street, your community, your constituency, all are pieces in a massive puzzle called Trinidad Tobago. 
Let us stand together and stand up for our country. We can fix this. Any racist politics, any classist politics, any religious nonsense. Stop looking for things that divide us. Look at all the things that unite us. This is the red man, Chindian, half breed, Dogla, everybody, all inclusive party. This is the progressive empowerment party. One people under one flag. Wake yourself up and stand up and wake everybody else around you. And when people tell you, they never hear about it, say, sit down. Let me tell you. Yeah? See you all tomorrow night. Frontline. Frontline replaces this. Well, I, I, Frontline is a show tomorrow, so I won't do any show. I will share Frontline on my own. Frontline is going to feature Janice, Felicia, um, Tony, myself, and I can't remember who else. The Serenabi. There's going to be a nice lineup, and we're going to be dealing with the spirit of Christmas. So it'll be a much kinder, gentler version of what we do. Frontline tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock. So see you tomorrow. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, and have a nice Christmas.